Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're working on our Deadpool Funko Pop character. In today's session we'll be working on the arms and the hands with fingers. Do remember to check out the links in the description for other useful playlists from my channel and the links to my character course which takes you from nothing right through to a game ready character with rigging animation ready for a game engine. Okay so here's where we got up to last time and in order to work on the arms I'm going to go to edit mode with our body Alt left click to select the arm circle here, full stop on my numpad to zoom in on that or period key, shift S cursor to select it and that will put my 3D cursor right in the middle there. Now also I can see down here that I've got eight verts and eight edges so I need to bear that in mind when I'm thinking about the fingers and how I'm going to split things up later on. So if I press shift A to add I only get the mesh menu because I'm in edit mode so I'm adding an object to this object. So if I choose cylinder now, change the verts to eight. It looks a bit odd because it's got a subdivision surface modifier on. I'm just going to go to the mirror and turn off clipping. That way when I scale it down, it won't join together. So somewhere around there and rotate around the Y 90 degrees. Okay, I'll zoom in on that again with full stop or period key. Round to the side and let's scale this up so it's roughly the same size. Somewhere around there is fine. 3 to face mode, let's select this end face and delete that and the back face there and delete that. Okay, now we've got a circle. I'll press Alt left click to select that face loop and just move it out slightly so they're roughly lining up. They don't need to be touching, just nice and close. 2 to go to edge mode and let's select that edge ring there. I'll bring back my reference images for this bit. So let's bring those back there and let's go to front view into wireframe mode and let's start thinking about moving this into position so rotate this around somewhere around there i'm scaling it in just a touch there and g to grab okay i'm going to turn subdivision surface modifier off just so i don't do anything that's crazy sort of overlapping and then i'm going to link these two up now i've just noticed that the neck is all out and that's why it's important every now and again to look without the subdivision surface modifier because when you're rigging you might want to rig a low poly version or you might want to rig with the subdivision surface modifier still enabled, as in the modifier still being there. So it's going to rig to your low poly mesh and you don't want that all deformed. So I press one for vertex mode and tidy this up a little bit. I'll isolate this with forward slash on my numpad so it's a little bit easier and just tidy this up. Okay, so that looks a bit better. What I need to do now is attach this arm to the body that's nice and simple. We come up to here where this magnet is, enable that which is snapping and we turn it to vertex. Now when I press G to grab, it will grab itself onto another vertex and that makes it nice and easy. What you must also check is that you've got auto merge on as well. So when you've put them together, they become one vertex. Okay, that all looks great. Let's go back to solid mode and make sure everything's good. I just press GG on this one to move that down. When you press GG, that turns off the snapping. Okay, let's just quickly look at side view and get back the reference images. So forward slash on my numpad, side view again. Let's just see where we are with our circle. I'll press two to go to edge mode and select the arm and just move that up slightly into position and scale it and just tidy up these verts a little bit so they're making a bit more sense. To front view now with one on my keyboard. So I'll move this, oh, I've got snapping on. Turn that off, I'll move that into position and just move these down slightly. GG on this one, edge slide. And I'll create a new cut in here. So control three and wireframe mode. And then I can just create a shoulder. So G to grab and move it upwards. Let's just go to front view and wireframe. Let's move these down into position. Okay, subdivision surface modifier back on, just so we can see the results of this. And I'll move these down a touch and move these in a touch. Make sure I'm not overlapping. That's all good. Okay, edge mode with two, select this end edge here and E to extrude. I'll scale that down slightly, rotate and scale. Now I'm not going to follow the arm completely, I'm going to have it stick out further here because when you're rigging, you don't want your arm too close to your body and this is a little close, especially the hand here, so we've got to watch out for that. Just go into vertex mode and tidy that up a little bit. Okay, back to edge mode, select that, E to extrude and extrude again. So that's about where the elbow is, just there. Although that's not low enough, is it? So I'll just select these and GG to edge slide, probably around there. And now I can select this one, back to front view, G to grab. So the elbow's around there. Now we're on the forearm, 
E to extrude again. And now we're about the wrist. He's got his arm slightly bent forwards, you see. So it's going a bit further than the wrist on the model. If you stretch out your arm, your fingers should end up near the middle of your thigh. Obviously this is a stylized character, but just for a rough guide as to how long your arm should be. Okay, so if you're doing a sort of blobby hand, you'll just press E to extrude and make a sort of square. For us, we're gonna make fingers today, so I'll just grab that a bit further up here. I'll select this edge loop and just scale it in a touch. And this is my wrist here, so I'll scale that in a fair bit as well. And we can start modifying the arm a little bit more later on. But let's think more about the fingers for the moment. Okay, I'll go to solid mode so we can see it a bit easier. And we want to use this three on the top here and the three on the bottom there for our fingers. So I'll just rotate it really slightly. So you can see the three on the top like that makes it a bit simpler. And I can select this end one here and press F to fill and press that two more times. And now we've got three spaces for fingers. I'm going to edge slide this one in and edge slide this one in. So we're ready with a wrist there. Looks a little bit thin at the moment and the forearm's very big. So I'll sort that out really slightly now, just make it a slightly bigger wrist and the forearm a little bit less. Just come in a little bit on the elbow and just slide that in. So that's the sort of shoulder there. Scale that in just a touch. And generally you give the model a slight bend, so G then Y just move those back very slightly. I'm just gonna slide them up a little bit more. GG to edge slide. Just slide those up just a touch, there we go. I think that's about right now. For the wrist, it can be really helpful to have another supporting loop, so Control R and just have a supporting loop in there. And I think we're about there with the shape. So you're looking around about here. I can actually select this edge loop and just GG and edge slide that down slightly. And these are just round out the arms a little bit. Let's have a look at the subdivision surface modifier. Make sure we're all okay. Yep, that's all fine. I've got a bit extra around here for deformation purposes when we rig. And notice that this is shaded smooth and this isn't. That's because I sort of added it afterwards. So I can go into object mode, right click and shade smooth. So it all goes smooth. Looks a bit nicer like that. Back into edit mode and let's start thinking about the hand and the fingers. So I'll select these end faces here. And just from the side here, let's extrude it out. So there's the hand couple for the hand and then for the fingers we need to alt e extrude individual faces and that will extrude them out i'm just going to scale them all in really slightly so coming up to here the transform pivot point if we go to individual origins i can scale them in so they just go a bit thinner and they'll separate from each other and now i'll turn that back to medium point and that'll be fine e to extrude out just see what that looks like I'll just start rounding them out a little bit now. So let's just pull them inwards really slightly. I'll turn the subdivision surface modifier off. It looks a little bit odd like this, I know, but that'll be fine. Just separate them a bit more as well so it's easier to see what's going on. And you might have to move the edge loops out a little bit just to help you. Okay, so these edge loops need to be a lot further because they're actually the first knuckle around there and now I can select the last three faces and just G to grab to pull them out and one more extrude there. Okay, there's a bit of editing to be done certainly and his hand may be a little bit long so we might have to pull it all back a touch. So let's go to wireframe mode and select those faces, G to grab, there we go. Back to solid mode. For the thumb, I'll select this face here and E to extrude. And then this face in here for the thumb, E to extrude and pull it out, G to grab to pull it out there, and E to extrude. And let's just scale that end bit down. Looks a little bit strange, but then we just grab this end edge here, G to grab, and we've got a thumb. Again, it's all nice and basic, nothing too complicated in terms of topology, just keeping it nice and simple. Okay, so let's just smarten it up a touch. So I'll select some faces and just move them around and edit them slightly. Your hand is actually a fair bit wider than the wrist, so we'll certainly need to sort of bring this out. What I'm going to do is select these end faces here in face mode with three, and then control plus to increase the selection. And then just to get the last few, C to circle select and paint those in. Okay, so I've got all those selected. 
I can now press Shift H to hide the rest of the body. Now try not to move this edge ring here too much because that's kind of the reference to the rest of the body. And we just need to edit the shape so it starts working a bit better. I'll deselect this face ring here. So Shift Alt left click on one of the edges going down. And now I can scale this up slightly. Thumb's getting a bit big, but we can adapt that. Okay, that's great. Select these two and scale it down. And now it's just a case of adapting your shape really slightly and evening things out. The knuckles should have a slight curve to them. So I can simply slide down these edges with GG. Let's resize the fingers so they're pretty similar. I'll select the end faces here and just rotate them. And I'll give them a bit of a curve downwards like so. These edge loops along here. So they're more like fingers. Okay, we're sort of getting there. Thumb should come down slightly as well, actually. So let's select those control plus to go up a couple and we'll rotate that slightly this way, just like this, basically. <laughs> Hopefully this is making sense. Okay, so it's got a sort of curve to it like this. Back with the subdivision surface modifier, see how that's looking. It's not looking too badly. Probably need these sticking out just a touch more. Even those fingers out a bit. And the middle finger should be a tiny bit longer, shouldn't it? I still want to do some minor adjustments, I suppose. Out of edit mode, we can see what that's looking like. Now our character has much bigger hands, don't they? So I'm back into edit mode and that still keeps my sort of hidden object. I'm gonna scale this up a fair bit, somewhere around there and press Alt H to unhide the rest of the object. That's a bit more like it, I think. Just a bit more scale on the hands and then just a bit of tidying up around the wrist. Okay, so there's our Deadpool with the arms and the hands. And we're just about getting there, aren't we? As usual, comment below with any thoughts you might have. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.